message is about safe driving. All right, let's go. Anytime you're driving, have the seatbelt buckle tight. Both hands on the wheel and your phone out of sight. We're not in your hand trying to text somebody back. Because if you do, your car might get smacked. The moral of the story, just put your phone down. The people on the road will stay safe and sound. Put your phone down, put your phone down. People on the road will stay safe and sound. Yeah. <laughs>
multiple guys getting going. Um, you know, Jalen Slaughter finally really broke out. We've been waiting for him to have that game, and he hit five threes and had, you know, wow. just you know got you know got the ball going through the hoop. And once he saw one go in, it was like, okay, I got this. So. Um, yeah, he had a big game, and then defensively, uh, Brady Manson, Dre did a great job on their uh, on Callahan. They were kind of switching off on him, and our other guards did a great job on Max. And so we, we the cool thing I was going to say is at the end of that game, we were about a five point lead, and all of a sudden, boom, 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 we we had a couple baskets and actually extended out to like ten. And and you know, just our guys made, made really good plays at the end of the game, and our defense led to some transition offense and you know we, we were able to finish in that and we hadn't done that earlier in the year so that was fun to see usually those are the type of games we were hanging on to win at the mm -hmm. last second so a maturity thing maybe for our team is you know that next step of, of taking a lead and, and growing it versus uh trying to squeeze the life out of it and not lose <laughs> it so uh really fun uh fun atmosphere for that game too as well and then your most recent game uh, this past Saturday, traveling over to Glen Oak, probably one of the better wins of the season, knocking off the Golden Eagles, uh, 80 to 73. <laughs> yeah, I would say definitely one of the best, if not the best, win of the year. Um, to beat a really good 16-win Glen Oak team, who the night before was playing for the Federal League Championship, and lost that one by one, you know, in a foul call with 0.8 seconds left in the game. You know, you're just I'm like, what team are you gonna get? You get the team that's emotionally hung over, or mm -hmm. you're gonna get the team that's gonna be, you know, a little bit angry and. and but it, when we come in, we always tell guys like, you know, people will want to play you guys. You know, with the team, you know, a mass one across your jersey, you're going to get an effort. You're going to get a crowd. Uh, people are going to come ready to play. So, and it's their last game of the season, going to the tournament. So, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, they're going to want to have a good tune-up, uh, try to bounce back. So, uh, going to that one, Lipkins is really good, and they, they got a lot of guys who can put the ball in the hoop. Uh, Zerger and uh, uh, Broom, the point guard, and, and you know, actually, the guy that killed us was uh, Scott. You know, but we were focused on those three guys. He got the ball going, and towards the end, he couldn't miss. And mm -hmm. so, um, but we outlasted them. And, you know, and, and it was kind of cool. It really balanced uh, team. You know, Jalen hit a bunch of threes early, kept us in the game in the first quarter. Um, Eli, I think, had 22 and 15 rebounds. He, he just had an all-around game that he does all year. And then Chris Knight, the, you know, the closer, he came in and just got hot and ended up at 27 mm. and uh, at five threes. And he just got it going and hit some huge threes in the fourth quarter. Our bench was amazing. They were jumping up and down. It was awesome. Uh, just, again, to see a team that, like, you know, just – it was counter punching back and forth that whole game. And we just talked about it yesterday. We said it wasn't a pretty game. You know, it wasn't like it was a perfectly played game. There's a lot of turnovers by both teams, but it was a competitive game. Just kids out there getting after it. And, uh, and, and like I told them on the bus, it wasn't X's and O's, it was Jimmy's and Joe's. You guys are out there, two teams going at each other, and, and uh, it was going to come down to kids making plays. And they, our guys played their, their, their butts off at the end of that game. You know, Brady Manson had some great steals and, and some great baskets and transition. Early in the half, kind of set the tone. And, uh, you know, just so many contributions from so many guys. Jada Stigpin down the stretch made a couple big baskets. So uh, it's really a fun group to watch, uh, you know, on Friday night, or Saturday night. All right. In a moment, we'll meet a Tiger player. But first, this word from Reliable Heating and Cooling. Everything that goes into a Linux system is engineered for absolute comfort. Like the parts that create your perfect temperature and humidity. Or the parts that purify the air. Together, all these parts save you up to half of your heating and cooling bills. And there are few things more comforting than that. The future of home comfort is here now at Reliable Heating and Cooling. Get the latest innovation and technology at Reliable. Linux. Innovation never felt so good. Thanks to Reliable Heating and Cooling, and welcome back to The Josh Ho Show. Our Tiger player joining us this week is junior forward Dreshawn Jackson. Dreshawn, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. How old were you when you first learned the game of basketball, and do you remember who taught it to you? Yeah, I was about fifth grade. My dad taught me to play because he wanted me to play that. So I started playing basketball ever since then. I've been playing. What are some of the things you worked on this past offseason to improve your game? So this offseason, I really just uh, focused on off-the-court stuff, some more of my attitude. I feel like the past couple of years, my attitude ain't been really good for the team. I was kind of like a... I wouldn't say toxic player, but I didn't have a good attitude, wasn't real coachable, so I was focused on them things more than on the court stuff, and that's it. Did you set any personal goals for yourself coming into this junior season? Play varsity, that was it. Just play varsity basketball. Now, you were a starter at the beginning of the season, now you're coming off the bench, so 
How do you prepare yourself mentally as you're watching the start of the game, knowing that you're going to go in there and contribute? So I like coming off the bench more. Story made me a little too nervous. I ain't like it. So when I come off the bench, I get a feel for the game. I know what I'm coming into. And I'm usually the first one off the bench. I'm the sixth man. So I just come in and bring my energy, bring my defense and my rebounding and everything go right. And finally, I understand that you like to call yourself a dragon. Now, what, what exactly does that mean, and where did you, where'd that come from? So, like, my favorite player is Kevin Garnett. Mm -hmm. He talked a lot of trash, like a lot, a lot of trash. So I was watching a video. He was playing uh, Doc Rivers' son, Austin Rivers. Austin Rivers tried to check the ball up with him. He like, dude, I'm a dragon. Like, you don't, you don't want this. You don't want to wake the dragon. And then he, ever since then, I just started calling myself a dragon. So on the court, I'm a, I'm a dragon. So I, I don't know. Sounds good to me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. All right. Uh, Jay Sean Foster joining us on the, Jay Sean Jackson, excuse me, joining us on the program this week. Uh, Coach Hose will rejoin us on the Josh Ho Show after this timeout. Hello, and welcome to the Stark County Humane Society. Today we're gonna to give you a few pointers when considering adopting a new furry friend. All animals here at the Stark County Humane Society are spayed, neutered, microchipped, vaccinated, dewormed, and if old enough, heartworm tested for our canine friends. Adopters will receive a free exam within two weeks of adoption at local veterinarian hospitals. We encourage all adopters to take full advantage of this. A one-time adoption fee is required for your new furry friend. When you adopt, you get an awesome adoption packet that includes treats for your new fur baby and savings for you. But this is not where the cost of adoption stops. Did you know the average cost of an animal like a new puppy or kitten can cost up to $500 annually? This includes annual veterinary visits, preventative care, and everyday supplies like crate, litter, food, toys. But I hope this doesn't scare you away. Adopting an animal is a huge responsibility and a commitment. Please take the time to consider the cost of adopting a new pet into your family today. I hope to see you soon at the Stark County Humane Society. Please visit our website or visit us on social media for more information. Welcome back to the Josh Ho Show. Coach, we just spoke with junior Drayshawn Jackson in our last segment. Tell us more about uh, Drayshawn and his impact on this team. Dre it's been such a unique case this year because we didn't have him with us last year. And, um, you know, so for him to come in and make the impact he has on our team, it's been amazing. Uh, he brings a ton of energy uh, every day in practice, every, you know, just anything. Even yesterday we had a speaker come in and, and Dre is locked in and he, he volunteered an answer and you could just tell there's such a, there's such an intensity to his energy and it's so uh, contagious, you know? And, and so I think he brings so many things to the table that, that people probably don't see on the court alone that you just can't put a value on. You can't put a, a stat on it. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, defensively, he's a guy that wants to play defense. You know, and those are hard to find. Like, you know, you, right. you, you get a guy like that, you know you got something. So uh, he wants to defend. He wants to rebound. And, and the offensive part of the game's coming. We knew that was going to be a little bit uh, a time to develop. But it's like you tell the guys all the time, and the offense isn't going. You know, defense and rebound is your thing. And, and so he really bought into that. And that's why he's playing such a vital role for us. He was starting earlier in the year. Um, and then we switched him to uh, coming off the bench and we, we switched lineups there around the first of the year. And it was the coolest thing. We had this one-on-one -on -one meeting and, and, and I think, you know, I talked to Dre about like, hey, your, your role's not changing. Your minutes aren't changing. Just the way you're getting those minutes or, you know, the, the, you know, the, the term starter is not there. Mm -hmm. And he didn't miss a beat. He just smiled. He goes, I'm happy Brady's starting in my spot. And, you know, it's, you know just because he sees another kid who plays a very same, similar game to him. Uh, very selfless basketball players. And, and so um, I can't say enough about his impact and his value to this team. Before we talk about the last two games of the regular season, how about another update on the freshmen and uh, JV teams? Sure. Our freshmen are, are actually done. Uh, they ended up 11 and 11. Um, they, they had two losses at the end of the year in the tournament. They won the first round and then uh, lost to Louisville and uh, Hoban in the next two rounds of our, our freshman tournament we host here. Uh, St. Ignatius ended up winning the whole thing. And um, you know, but it, actually a good year. I, mean, I don't know if they overachieved or, what, you know, I didn't know how many we get coming into it, especially when we take your best player off of, of JV with Jadis uh, moving up. And then I know Smitty had uh, moved up Isaiah Lamp. 
uh, at times. And so he, he was limited quarters. Not, you know, he didn't miss a lot of games, but he was limited quarters at times. Mm -hmm. So uh, Derek does a good job with the, that group. And, uh, you know, the freshman level, JV level is tough because you're, okay, you get this kid for two quarters, you get that mm -hmm. one for three sometimes, and uh, trying to juggle that. And, um, you know, you're playing in empty gyms and on a random Thursday night or whatever it is. So you're, you're, you're dealing with some uniqueness there. And um, freshman kids are just, you know, they're, they're dealing with a lot of transition anyways coming to high school. So, mm -hmm. you know, 11 and 11, um, not the year we were hoping for, but also, uh, you know, it's, it, it wasn't a total failure. We saw a lot of growth in some kids and looking forward to seeing some of those guys uh, develop at the next level as, as the years come up. And then uh, JV-wise, uh, having a good year. Uh, had a tough one Saturday night. I think we're sitting at 16 and four right now. Mm -hmm. uh, so overall, it's been a really good year. And again, Smitty's not the extremeness of last year where we were juggling guys back and forth, but there are several times where it's like, okay, this guy's moving up. He's playing a couple quarters here. You got this kid for two or three. Um, last year, it was way worse. Uh, this year, it's a little <laughs> more stability. Uh, but with, with our roster changing a little bit, the varsity level has changed his roster as the year's gone on. So... Um, you know, you've, you've seen that reflective in certain games where we haven't played as well. It's like, well, he lost a key piece. And it takes people don't understand how long it takes to kind of develop the new chemistry. Mm -hmm. um, and Smitty does a really good job with that. So it's been a good year, uh, both those levels for sure. All right. So we look up. It is a long season. But now <laughs> you're looking at the last two games of the regular season. As we record, as we mentioned earlier, on Tuesday, you're home tonight to take on a very good Louisville Leopard team. Tell us about them. Louisville, they're just a, a team we knew was going to be a problem this year. We played them late in the year last year and uh, lost in overtime over at Louisville and had a good shot to, to win it in regulation. Missed it and had, missed a putback, uh, you know, close to the you know the buzzer. And mm -hmm. um, so we knew, like, I mean, that was a, that was going to be a really tough uh, team moving forward because they were really young. And then they go on and, and go to the Elite Eight in Division Two. So uh, they had that confidence, that experience coming back. Uh, I think they're 16 and four themselves right now. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, they, they, they just they've had some big games this year. I think they scored 106 against the Lions earlier in the year. And, uh, you know, they've had some, some teams they've lost to recently, like, like you were mentioning Hoover. Mm -hmm. um, but Hoover is a team that can, they can play with anybody. They can beat anybody any given night. They've beat Walsh. They've beat Louisville. So, um, you know, that, it's just a, it's a really quality team. they got uh, four guys that really get it going. And, and you know, Al Jancic is, is just a great player. Uh, Nigro, Bo Siegfried, and, um, um, oh, shoot, um, Going gross. Blank. gross. Mm -hmm. Yes, I wanted to say Zerger, but that's that's <laughs> Glen Oak. Uh, but yeah, gross. Uh, you know, just they got length, they got uh, talent, and they can shoot it. So uh, we're going to have to be on our A game tonight, defensively, and really come ready to go. And, and again, that competitive juice that we had against uh, Glen Oak, we're going to need that tonight. Firestone on uh, Friday night that wraps up the regular season. What do you know about the Falcons? They've been up and down this year. I've, I saw them earlier in the year against uh, Perry, and, and that was a game that came down to the wire. And uh, they have some athletes. They have some talent. Uh, you know, sometimes they're a little sloppy at times, and, and you can get caught up in that type of game. I think they beat uh, Copley the other night. So, you know, just it's hard. You know, we've looked at them a little bit. Don't know a ton about them. They had a coaching change. I know last year, towards the end of the year, they were, they were kind of uh, surging at the end of the year. They played green tonight, so that will be good to see mm -hmm. kind of a, a barometer of where they're at. And, uh, you know, we got them on senior night. So our seniors, uh, you know, we have five seniors that we'll be honoring. And then our manager, Dylan. And, uh, you know, it'll be an opportunity for them to all start and uh, get out there and play. Uh, but we got to honor our seniors with, uh, you know, it's a great effort that night. And, you know, I think Firestone's one of those teams you don't want to overlook for sure. And it will be our last tune-up going into the tournament. And speaking of tournament, tell us about the seedings and tell us about when you play your first sure. tournament game. Yeah, so we got the 23 seed out of 37 teams. And uh, it's kind of right where we thought we'd kind of land. Mm -hmm. uh, love to be higher, but obviously, you know, <laughs> you don't have control over that. Uh, we went in at 10 and 9 and during the seeding and uh, had just beat New Philly before that, that one, uh, you know, before the seeding happened. But uh, it's kind of interesting because there's so many teams in Northeast Ohio, it's hard to, to gauge how, everybody, how good everybody is compared mm -hmm. to each other. Uh, so your league teams tend to bond together, and uh, but we're good with our seed. We liked it. We got a home game out of it, which was huge because I didn't really think we would have that. Uh, we went into the the meeting. We kind of had some eye, eyes on some teams that okay, if we have to pick a spot, maybe this is a team we match up well with, or this is a team we want to look at. And as it's shaken out, some teams took buys that we didn't anticipate. I mean, we can get a home game here. Now the 
that was great. But then the tough thing is all right, that second round game. So you get a home game, but now you're looking at, do we want to go play at Jackson, at Hoban, or at Menor mm-hmm. uh, if we would win that first round? And uh, so we kind of looked at it all and, and you know, is pick your poison type thing. So uh, the bracket we jumped into, uh, again, we got to take care of business first in the first round with Hudson. Uh, but yeah, definitely, uh, you know, like to get in the home game. And, uh, you know, that second round opponent's always going to be good, especially in our district this year is really deep. Uh, so we, we, we picked the one we thought was, was our best matchup, and we'll go from there. But, uh, you know, we figured in that second round, we kind of said, okay, we're probably getting Boardman, Hudson, or Perry. You know, just looked at the teams that were behind us. And mm-hmm. so Boardman passed on us. Next team up was Hudson. They took our line, uh, which I don't blame them. They, you know, we played them to overtime uh, of their place. So I think they feel like, okay, that's one we, we should have won. Let's go mm-hmm. against the Tigers. So we're going to have a tough first round game, and, and every, every game in the tournament is tough. So All right. we like it. Well, good luck the rest of this week, and we'll welcome you back next week on the Appreciate show. It. That'll do it for this edition of the Josh Ho Show, brought to you each and every week by Reliable Heating and Cooling of Maslin. I want to thank Coach Ho's and junior forward Drayshawn Jackson for joining us on the show this week. And as always, go Tigers! Maslin City Schools is proud to have one of the top career technical education programs in the state of Ohio, recently receiving a number one ranking of the 93 districts in the area of achievement. Our career technical education department offers 14 pathways preparing students for college and careers. All students have the opportunity to participate and compete in their career technical student organization, as well as obtain valuable experience in the field while earning aligned industry credentials and or college credit in high school. Visit maslinschools.org for more information. Around here, we like to cheer for the local team, and MCTV is here to connect you to the game. MCTV provides reliable high-speed internet and Wi-Fi. From checking scores online, to streaming games or watching replays, or even playing the game yourself, we've got the speed you need. Call today to add or upgrade internet service. We're connecting what matters most. MCTV, we go the extra smile.